Good afternoon. Welcome to Living Mosaic. My name is Martha Holden. I am a member of the Spark of Humanity Network. Living Mosaic is conceived as a conversation. Those of you who may be muted or held in the Zoom corral, um, the conversation will include you eventually. It's a conversation based in about the concept that there is a solution to the pain in so many aspects of our global experience. We could frame it also as a solution to the sustainability of the human enterprise on planet Earth. Or however we think about it, there is a solution here. And we at the Spark of Humanity Network have found developing the conviction that there is a solution to it. And that the way that we are seeing to suggest, to offer, make it easy to visualize and engage in, is that the solution may be seen as a living mosaic. Living and therefore evolving mosaic of which we are each an essential part. We are each unique. We are each essential for the solution to the pain, to the difficulties, to the issues of sustainability, to emerge and become known and become realized. So this program is offered as in hopes of developing a conversation around this concept so that we may discover what we need to be doing or what we might be doing in order to be guided or drawn into our niche within the mosaic, which may, of course, require letting go of a lot of stuff, a lot of old ideas, a lot of comfort zone. Who knows what it, it may involve holding on to other things, but I suspect from my personal experience that what it involves mostly is letting go and holding on to the hope the hope that there is a solution and that by my letting go of my old ideas, my self-will, that there is, in a sense, to terribly anthropomorphize it, the mosaic being alive may be breathing and it may inhale me into my own unique niche. It's my unique niche. I've spent much of my life as perhaps some of you have, and think I wanted to be in that niche over there. And it wasn't that, you know, I mean, they're a piece of broken mirror. They're much cooler than me. I'm just the pebble. So, you know, I want to be over there. I want to tag along with them. Can't I be in the niche next to them? But uh, no, maybe, not in my control. It depends how, how and when I'm drawn into the mosaic, into the life of the mosaic. So that's, the conversation is around that. Now last, a couple of weeks ago, we did a pilot show. We we're checking the, checking the tech here. And the, after I left the show, I realized that I had made a statement or done a line, line of discourse that I wanted to clear up before we start the general conversation here. And that was, I was talking about something about, you know, not worrying about the other person and how they are you know, not focusing on them, focusing on letting go of what I need to let go of in order to be drawn into my niche in the mosaic. And I realized that that sounded a little cold-hearted or a little cold-blooded. And so I wanted to talk just a little bit before I open up the Zoom, but from my look at the monitor, there's nobody in Zoom waiting, so that makes things simpler. Um, although sadder, of course. 
that that how how do I how do we how does one who's trying to f- let go of everything that they need to let go of in order to be drawn into their niche in the mosaic to find it to finally have that feeling of security and nestedness of belonging of belonging to the whole creation all orders of being all dimensions of being when we're in the process of doing that and trying to allow that process to be alive in our lives to welcome it to receive all as grace as some people say how do we deal with that person over there who we think really you know needs to find their way into their niche in the mosaic or they are intruding on us how do we deal with the others in this process and I only got to the point of my thinking of knowing that I needed to talk about this today. I didn't get to the point of thinking about what the answer was to the question I just raised. Um, this is sort of this is where the Spark of Humanity Network work um, can come in. It does for me, and I think it does for others. That being aware of my Spark of Humanity, or if you're tired of anthropocentrism, my germ of true that is within each created being, getting in touch with that and realizing that that other person or that other creature has that same spark or germ and connecting, not through my mind, but through my spark of humanity or my germ of true with that place in the other and knowing that by doing that, we are, I am, you are, we are strengthening that place in the other, which makes them more available to being drawn into the mosaic, into the niche that they belong in. It's, it's that process as we've discovered in doing the spark work, our website will be at the end of the program, I think, Um, that when we do that, when we connect with that place from from our place, not from our place, connect to that place in another person or being, that we strengthen that place in them. We strengthen that place in us too, which at times can be a little scary. I'm fine just the way I am. But we strengthen that spark, that place in them, their spark, their germ, And what that tends to do, it seems, we've noticed, working with this for a while, that that tends to erode the defenses, clarify the bafflement, because usually defenses come because we're we're baffled and distorted, and release the distortions. So that, that begins the process which supports the other person, the other being, in moving closer to their niche. And that's, that internally and without words and without our face-to-face confrontation at great distances can help them, can, it's what we can do to facilitate their movement into their, their becoming the unique person, the unique being that they are, to be drawn into their place in the mosaic. Because that's what we want to be doing. Ideally, we want everyone to be in their unique place in the mosaic because they are essential. But we don't want to be doing it from our trying to make it happen because then we're losing touch with our own essential, unique character which is not, we are not in charge of the mosaic. We do not design it. We do not make it happen. So it's, it's that process. We open them up to it. On an external person-to-person level, if we happen to have any contact with them um, personally, just remembering and holding them in. I often think of, did any of you take biology in school? Growing something in a petri dish 
the agar, the growth medium that you put this little bit of tissue, this little pathogen, this little whatever in this petri dish and you put it in some nice warm safe place and eventually over time something grows and you find out what it truly is. It may have looked like that, but once it's been allowed to germinate and develop, you see, oh, it's hibiscus. I thought it was a pumpkin. Um, so that, that general attitude of what I can do besides connecting through my spark or my germ with the spark or germ and the other, what I can do is I can, in my behavior, in my mind, in my, my relationships with this other person, I can practice being agar and just being something, being an environment that helps them become who they truly are. Because that's the mosaic is made up of these little individual pieces, each one of us unique who we truly are. It's not made up of who we think we should be. It's not made up of who our parents thought we would probably be. It's not, trust me, made up of who we'd be most comfortable with. It's made up of who we truly are, our essential, unique being and that is essential to the mosaic. So is, do I see a hand? No, I don't see a hand. Nobody Zoomed, nobody's called that I know of. I trust Jen to let me know if I'm wrong. She's waving. Um, so I will just keep on prattling until somebody comes on board or calls in. And if you want to call in, the phone number is going to be shown on the screen any minute now. And if you want to zoom in, here's the zoom link any minute now. And meanwhile, I shall just keep carrying on because, um, oh, and another thing, if you're watching this and you want to participate in this conversation, so it's not just a monologue. If you don't like what I'm saying, or if you like it, or if you have a question, or if you wish I'd talk about X, Y, or Z, you may email us at livingmosaic, all one word, livingmosaic2024 at gmail.com. And I think that email will be on the, at the tag end of, the, of this process. So, okay, I'm going to have a little silence here to see if anything comes up for me to talk further about. How we came up with this idea. That's a good question. It, for me, in me, it grew from, for quite a period of time, I've thought that if, the, there's a lot of pain in the world. There's a lot of distress. There's a lot of unfairness. And often we see it, we become aware of it, and we feel the pain and we see the, feel the distress, or we see it. And we don't know what to do about it. And we don't know what we can do about it. And so often for many of us, we just don't look anymore. We go and it's, it's too painful, it's too difficult. I won't read the newspaper, I won't watch the news, I won't you know, go out of the house. I won't, we'll, we just protect ourselves from it because we don't know what to do. Or we go in denial. I'm not going to, you know, we just don't see it. We don't recognize it. Those are, I think of those as the two majors. There, 
lots of words you can put on them, but that's, there are only two of them, but they both start with D, so it makes it simple for me. So, I began thinking that if, this is me, and others came to the same conclusion, but different routes, that if we all had, if we all were, if we had a, a, an image or a, a vision that was available to all of us that we could all come, come together with and, and, and have enough faith in, I suppose is a word, or hope, maybe it was just hope, that, that we were willing to get out of our own old ideas about what the solution is. There used to be a workshop given a couple times in this state, discovering the peaceful solution. And the premise was that if you have people who are in conflict, or there's a situation that's difficult, and people have different ideas about what the solution is, my idea, my idea, my idea, our idea, um, that, that if everybody, if they were able to let go of their attachment to their personal idea, everybody should be doing this, nobody should be doing that, they, they, they should be doing whatever, that and then just be together, physically together, I think works best, but we're going, we've got this electronic medium, so we're giving it a try. Just to be aware that there is a solution and allowing it to emerge in the silence, through the silence, from the silence, the way I experience it myself is that it sort of bubbles up. It's sort of, maybe not bubble, it's more like mist coming up and, hmm, oh, I sort of see this, oh, maybe this. And I, if there's a group of, say, five of us, I may have a little different perspective here. I, I suggest this, maybe it's like this. And somebody said, well, it may be like that too. And, hmm, and that, that, a solution would emerge. It was, the title of the workshop was Discovering, like it was covered up and then it was discovered. <laughs> it emerged. And, and from that, sort of I think it was from that, sort of leading on from that, the idea that, that well, that could be expanded. Could be expanded as far as it needs to be expanded that if we give up the blaming and the they shoulds, and why did this happen? Sometimes for our own peace of mind, we need to have an idea about how did this situation come about and be open to seeing how it came about and understanding how perhaps our attitudes had a part in it coming about. Maybe never spoken, but you know, there's a lot of subtle energy going on here that affects the global, the galactic scene. So, and so doing that, that perhaps if you know, if we could have a vision, an idea that that if enough people could believe, could know that there is a solution and be willing to let go of their ideas about what it had to look like and what part they needed to play in it or not play in it, that the solution could emerge. So that idea was sort of festering is not a good word. It was germinating in me. It was, it was in the Petri dish um, for a number of years. And then, I, I don't know, I don't know, I, I was out in, I was out in the, 
one a district of San Francisco where there are some wonderful wall murals. I think this had part to do with it. And in the murals, you know, all sorts of things. You know, blue glass, red glass, mirror, pebbles, shells. And I think somehow that all came together. And I realized that, of course, the solution is living. It's not static. Which means that as we approach, and hopefully eventually, find our niche within the mosaic, we also need to be living. We cannot be static. We need to be responsible. We need to be paying attention. We need to be willing to go deeper. I think the only way, perhaps, to get bounced out of our niche in the mosaic, I mean, the only way not to get bounced out of our niche in the mosaic as it continues to live is by going deeper into our niche, whatever deeper is for us. And we can, if we're willing to go deeper, because willingness is a key, as many of us are aware. Um, so, and the living, the mosaic is, because it's living, it's also evolving. So, next week, next year, next century, it may not look like it does now. And because we are part of an essential essential part of the mosaic, we too need to be willing not just to be living and alive, but also to be evolving and letting go of whatever gets in the way of our evolution. The, some people, famous, well-known people, write about and talk about the evolution of consciousness that we're now undergoing on this planet, in humanity and beyond. So, okay, how, how do we become willing to evolve? Because we can't make ourselves evolve. Can't do that. My suspicion is, my sense is that I'm more likely to become willing to evolve, to change, to become whatever I'm needed to be, to be part of the solution, if I have the sense of essential safety. That's a big thing for me, and I suspect for many of us, is how do I feel safe? What do I need in order to feel safe? And my experience so far is that, and it seems to be getting deeper, so I think it's true, my experience is that my safety is in my niche in the mosaic. That's where I feel safe, is when I recognize myself as being where I am needed, where I belong, within the vast mosaic of being. We, we can limit it to the planet, or we can extend it to the solar system, or the galaxy, or however big you want it, and multidimensional and ever-evolving. Um, but when I, the more I am able to experience myself, the more that I'm able to be and experience myself as I am being, where I belong in the mosaic, the part, the essential, little, tiny, minuscule part that, unique, that I'm needed to be, the safer I feel. Because, in a sense, I am home. Well, maybe not just in a sense. I am home in a way that maybe home has been for many of us, but I know that for some of us, home has never felt that safe. That, that just safe, all around safe, of being right where I belong, right where I need to be, right where I'm my true self, who I really, 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 really am, genuinely, authentically, beneath the layers of nicey-nice, beneath the layers of rebellion, beneath the layers of defiance, beneath the layers of all that stuff, beneath all those layers, where I essentially, where I am truly, truly, truly me, my own self, 
um, that, which is very strange to me, but I'm, we're all getting acquainted to it, hopefully. When I'm that, then I'm in my niche in the mosaic, or I get into, or I'm able to be in my niche in the mosaic, or being in my niche helps me discover that deeper, then I am safe, and I feel safe, and I experience the sense of safety. Ah. This is where I belong. This is where I am doing what's needed to be done by me in this situation. Right here, right now. This is where I am. This is where I truly am. This is where I truly am participating in the solution. This is where I am part of the life of this mosaic. So when I have that feeling, that security, that safety, then I am willing to evolve. This is all theoretical at this point. Let's see if it happens. But it seems, it feels right to me, that when I have that sense of belonging, that sense of home, that then I am willing, as the mosaic evolves, as it inevitably will. It must, because it's alive. That I am willing to accept and participate in the, the life, the evolution of the mosaic. So that's, that's another step, isn't it, from finding our niche in the mosaic. But, but it's an incentive, I think, to find ourselves, to experience ourselves, to recognize ourselves as truly in life, truly in the flow of life. Sometimes I think of it as a river. And, and it's flowing. And regardless of how bumpy the riverbed is, it's flowing, and it had, it's going where it's going. And I get to participate in it. And I get to let go of whatever, whatever rock I'm clinging, or stump or tree branch I'm clinging to, and allow myself to become part of that flow of life that is wanting to move, is doing what it can to move towards the solution. And it, although the flow is there in a dimension that I don't have any words for, it's like it's, it's you know, here we are doing our stuff and here's the flow. And it's trying to catch us up to bring us along with it so that we're participating in this flow of life. We are moving towards the solution. We are becoming part of the solution. We're able to let go of everything. We're willing, because this feels like life, big L, life, the way we would want it, that the way it truly is, with none of our defenses, none of our attachments, none of our distortions, none of our bafflements. We are truly participating in the flow of life. And when we're doing that, that's what we want. And we probably, if you're me, want more of it. So we're willing to let go more because there's always more to let go of, I have discovered in this life and in this journey. So um, we've got a minute left, and I'm going to be silent for a little bit and see whether anything happens. And then if nothing happens, there'll probably be more Martha talking. And remember, if you have comments or questions, you can email them to livingmosaic2024 at gmail.com. Those of you who have my personal email may be tempted to email me personally. And I can't tell you not to do that, but I can tell you that it works a lot better if you send it to Living Mosaic, because I will just be forwarding it to Living Mosaic. And then if it needs to come back to me, it will. So, but I'm... Glad you're paying attention, glad you're watching, glad you're part of this. 
And we'll be back in a couple weeks, live and in person, and right here at Orca Media. Thank you.